it's Saturday, April 28th, 2018, and it's uh, time for my tens. So we're going to stick with the whole draft theme that I've been doing all this week. I've kind of become very draft heavy this week. And I'm not even real sure that's going to stop real quick. Probably stop soon because, of course, the draft isn't next week. But I thought, well, what, what should be my tens topic be about? And it's like I kept trying to think of things that weren't football. I kept trying, but I, everything kept coming back to football. NFL football kept coming back over and over and over again. Back to the Broncos. Back to NFL football. Can't help it. Now, after the draft, it's like things will calm. And it'll be waiting for training camp and all the other stuff leading up into the season. So, we're going to go with my 10 first round disappointments for the Denver Broncos. Now, not... I'm not going to say busts. Some of these guys are busts. Some of them I'm just calling disappointments because they should have been better and they weren't. So, but if they're not necessarily busts because they may have gone to have better careers somewhere else or they had average careers, which, you know, I consider a bust somebody that plays very little for your team and does very little for your team or any team. Um, I don't even call any more Tony Mandarich uh, a bust because he was the second pick in the draft and he did go on to at least, he had a, a, a decently long NFL career. He ended up not playing tackle, but he ended up playing guard for like the Indianapolis Colts and was serviceable. So I don't consider him a, the biggest draft bust. He's still a draft bust, but he's not the, one of the biggest in history. Uh, I'd even put Steve Entman in front of him just because Entman had the injury and he was never really able to play. So these are going to be my top 10 Bronco disappointments, first round draft pick disappointments. Um, and I'm only going to go with players that I know. I mean, there are other players that are taken in the first round, but if I don't know their careers and I didn't watch them, I don't know if I was disappointed or not. So number one, we're going to start with probably the biggest disappointment. And this guy is a bust. This guy is a bust. Ted Gregory. He came to us out of the University of Syracuse. He was a first-round pick. In 1988, he was the 26th pick overall. Now, they said he was like six foot one. I guess when he came in, Dan Reeves was the, was the coach of the Broncos at the time, and Dan Reeves is six foot one. And Dan Reeves was looking over the top of this guy. And so he's going, who's this guy? This guy isn't six one. I'm looking over the top of him. So that wasn't the greatest thing. I guess uh, Ted Gregory never played a down for the Broncos in the regular season. We ended up trading him to the Saints for uh, Sean Knight. And I'm not even sure if Sean Knight really played that much for us. Uh, he was a, probably a first-round bust for the uh, Saints the previous year. So, you know, so uh, Ted Gregory, he is a bust. And he's probably the biggest bust in our history because... You know, he didn't play it down for us in the regular season. Uh, now, number nine uh, was the number 91 draft pick, Mike Kroll, out of the University of Nebraska. Now, he's not a draft bust. He's a disappointment. His rookie season, he had 10 sacks. He was a beast. We thought we had our Lawrence Taylor. This guy was amazing. The reason he's disappointing because he fell off the map. When people started focusing on him and realizing he could rush the passer, he couldn't get away. He couldn't beat double teams. So Mike Kroll ended up getting another 14 sacks, and I think he played. He had, I think he played a decent amount of years. I mean, he played until uh, he played until '98, so he played seven years in the NFL, but. In the next six years, he only had 14 sacks. He did have a couple interceptions. He even had a touchdown. Uh, but the reason he's disappointing is because I thought he was going to be so much better. I thought he was going to anchor our linebacking core for the next decade, and he didn't. He, he was, you know, he, he, he was basically exposed in the next season when people realized how easy it was to really just stop him uh, when you take time to actually focus on him. Um... My next one is the 1992 draft pick. Uh, disappointment. Tommy Maddox. Now, at the time, there was no reason to make this pick. John Elway was still playing. John Elway was only... This was 
He'd only played for nine years at this point. So it's not like he was nine years for an NFL quarterback. You're in your prime. But Dan Reeves always, for some reason, I don't know why Dan Reeves always seemed to be looking for the next best thing. He always seemed to want to replace Elway. I don't know why that was. I don't know what their relationship was. They always seemed to be very cordial to each other and professional, but they don't seem to be buddies. But Dan Reeves always seemed to be looking for somebody else. So he drafted Tommy Maddox out of UCLA. Tommy Maddox probably should have stayed another year in college. He came to the Broncos. He didn't really do much for us. Uh, John got hurt. He went 0-3 or 0-4 in the four starts that he had. And I think there was even a time where Dan Reeves was rotating him and Sean Moore out. So Tommy Maddox would do a series, and then the next series, Sean Moore would go in. Sean Moore was a quarterback out of the University of Virginia. And I think that was that year that um, they, he was rotating out both quarterbacks and just I don't know why Dan Reeves thought that would be a good idea, but he did. But Tommy Maddox ended up being, he ended up actually getting comeback player of the year when he went to the Steelers, so good on him, but he was never really much for us. He probably came out too early. He was behind a legend like John Elway. He didn't play good in his first games for us, and he was basically snake bitten after that. Um, now, the next, uh, the next pick we're going to do, we're going to do the 93 draft. So, obviously, 91, 92, and 93 for the Broncos, not that good. Uh, Dan Williams, a defensive end, um, and he was, uh, he was out of uh, Toledo University. And uh, now, we, he didn't have a bad career. He really didn't. He had 162 tackles, and he had 27 sacks. But I thought Dan Williams was going to be so much better than that. The fact is, you know, he didn't have a lot of tackles, and he should have had more tackles in his, you know, you got to figure he played in the league for, it looks like, I'm trying to figure this out right now. I mean, it looks like he played for four years for us, and he played another three years, four years for the Chiefs. So he had like an eight-year career, and in eight years he had 162 tackles, roughly 20 tackles a year. Your defensive tackles should probably get a little bit more than that. Um... 27 sacks for a D, or actually he was a defensive end. He wasn't a defensive tackle, so he should have had more sacks than 27 as a starting defensive end. Uh, and he was a first round pick. He was number 11. And he just, he was, he's a disappointment. He's not a bust, he's just a disappointment. Um, 1998, the Broncos at the number 30 pick drafted Marcus Nash, wide receiver out of the University of Tennessee. Marcus Nash was terrible. Marcus Nash is a bust. He is the second worst bust behind Ted Gregory. Marcus Nash was a bust. He was really good in the arena football leagues, but he was bad for the Broncos. He had four catches for 76 yards. This is a first-round pick. His NFL career is four catches, 76 yards. Your first-round pick should do four catches for 76 yards in his first game. I think, you know, and he, he did that in his NFL career, people. So Marcus Nash was always a huge disappointment. Huge, huge disappointment, but he was a bust. Uh, Marcus Nash was terrible. But the Arena League, he had, look up his Arena League stats. He was really good in the Arena League. Uh, in 2001, the Broncos drafted Willie Middlebrooks at a, at a University of Minnesota cornerback, uh, the 24th pick. Willie Middlebrooks played five years in the NFL, cornerback. He was drafted in the first round, never had an interception, not one INT. Dan Williams, the defensive end that we drafted, he has an interception. Mike Kroll has an interception. Willie Middlebrooks, a guy who's paid to get interceptions, never had an interception in the NFL. So, yeah, big disappointment and a bust. Uh, Ashley Lalee was the 19th pick in the 2002 NFL Draft. Now, Ashley Lalee didn't have a bad career. Ashley Lalee, um, he, he wasn't terrible. He played a few years for us. He actually had 217 receptions, 3,700 yards, 15 touchdowns in his career. He was... The reason I call him a disappointment, I don't call him a bust, I call him a disappointment. B, 
because I had high hopes for Ashley Lilly. I remember when the Denver Broncos drafted him. I had such high hopes. I loved watching him at the University of Hawaii. He could catch anything and everything that was thrown to him. He was amazing to watch. And I thought, I, I told my dad, I said, the Broncos need to get Ashley Lilly. We need wide receivers. They need to get Ashley Lilly. And my dad's going, who's Ashley Lilly? Who is this guy? I said, he played for the University of Hawaii. Sure enough, the Broncos took Ashley Lilly. And I was like, yes, yes, this guy's a stud. You watch. He is going to be great for the Broncos. The Broncos need a guy like this. He catches everything. I only caught some stuff. But in the NFL, he was an average wide receiver. Super stud at the University of Hawaii. Average wide receiver. The reason he makes this list is because it was disappointing for me. Uh, I had such high hopes for Ashley Lilly. I wanted Ashley Lilly to be uh, a 10-year veteran with the Broncos and, you know, have hundreds and hundreds of receptions with us, and, but didn't happen. So that's why Ashley Lilly is a disappointment, and he's on this list. Um, the next one is uh, Jay Cutler. Uh, he was our 11th pick, uh, quarterback out of Vanderbilt. And you're going, well, he's not a bust. He's not a bust. I don't rate Jay Cutler a bust at number 11. He's a disappointment um, because he has all the arm talent in the world. He has a lot of intelligence. He went to the University of Vanderbilt, and he has never lived up to his potential. He's like a Jeff George or, you know, just some of these guys, they get inside their own heads, and they're just, they're just not set up to be competitive at the NFL level. They have all the talent in the world, the intelligence, they have all the tools. They just don't know how to apply them to the football field. 2007, with the 17th pick, the Denver Broncos took Jarvis Moss, defensive end out of Florida. Jarvis Moss, I remember I was super excited about him too because he was a stud. It's like I kept watching this guy and watching tape on him and just going, man, he just comes off the edge. He is so fast this guy's gonna be a great edge rusher for years in his career 48 tackles six sacks two passes defended he was in the league for about five or six years but he was a bust that's right he's getting the bust label because he was the first round pick defensive and he was supposed to be our edge rusher for the next 10 years and i was super excited about him he had six total sacks in his career. Six as a first-round pick defensive end edge rusher. I mean, this isn't like he was a defensive end who was going to stop the run. He was an edge rusher. He was supposed to go get the quarterback. He just couldn't get him. So, uh, number, number nine. Or no, this would be my last one. This is the last one. The last pick. The last one. I did these just in order. These aren't in any particular order. I just went drafts through the years. 2010, the Broncos at number 25 picked quarterback out of Florida, Tim Tebow. I'm not calling him a bust because Tim Tebow should have been a third round pick. The Broncos and stupid Josh McDaniels traded up to pick him in the first round. If Tim Tebow would have went where he was supposed to go, which was in the third round, which is where a lot of people were projecting him to go, we wouldn't really be talking about this guy. In fact, the fact if he would have been a third-round pick and did the things that he did, people would be going, what an amazing pick in the third round. He won a playoff game for the Broncos. He won a lot of exciting games. He was really, really exciting. The problem was the basic stuff was boring with him. You, could, you didn't have to watch the first 40, you didn't have to watch the first 55 minutes of a football game. You just waited until the last drive and Tim Tebow was going to do something magic. But then, you know, he wasn't a prototypical quarterback. John and John Fox, John Elway and John Fox wanted a prototypical quarterback. Kyle Orton was awful. I just thought, keep Tebow in. But they didn't like Tebow. You could tell they just didn't like him. They didn't want him. Uh, and Tebow didn't want to play another position. To me, if Tebow would have played another position, he could still be in the NFL. And he could be an all-pro because he's so talented. Just a talented kid. Uh, so he's a disappointment only because I would have liked to have seen what he can do if he had just been a football player. Uh, so what do you think? You think those are the biggest draft disappointments in the first rounds of the, for the Broncos? 
Let me know down in the comments below and to all the troops past, present, and future. Thanks for the freedom.